So with the fifth pick, I expect the Detroit Pistons to avoid drafting a project player and go with an instant impact player. But what are your thoughts on that? You think they should go the project route, or do you think they should go with like a guy they think can help immediately starting day one? So you're saying you're happy that we're not number one overall because we don't have to make that lock pick like we always have had yeah. to in top, like top situations? Because I feel like in a draft like this, even though there is really no clear cut number one, I feel like Alex R is the clear cut number one. That there's going to be no conversation. You're really not going to be serious about working out other players because you know, look, I have to, I, because you're going to be stupid if you don't draft Alex R number one. Even if he's a bust, nine times out of 10, you got to take him with the number one overall pick. Because if you take anybody else and it doesn't pan out, you're just like, well, should have went with the seven foot one kid. I mean, it was obviously right in front of your face, and that's yeah. what I was feeling. That's what I feel like. So, like, I would say maybe this this NBA draft could be kind of similar to uh, the NFL draft this year with Caleb Williams. Like, it's a guy. It's a clear cut. There's no type of discrepancy. Guarantee since this has already happened, and now we know who's where in the in the pick, like in the selection. Maybe Atlanta only works out Alex Sark. Like they, because that's what the Bears did with Caleb Williams. They saw other prospects, but they hung out with him the most because they knew that's who they were going to take. So maybe that'll actually help Sar. And then if they're going to pick him and it's going to be a clear cut number one pick, you also got to figure out what you're going to do with your backcourt if you're going to keep them or you're going to get rid of them, which then you could flex more draft picks for whoever you want to get rid of and bring in. So, but with what you said about at number five, getting a Getting someone basically, you're saying either like a in, at least a rotation man, correct? Yeah, I'm saying, do you go with the project player where, you know, he does have a ton of potential, but he has a lot of holes in his game right now, and you're just kind of banking on him. We already yeah, have so many of those. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. We have so many of them. Or do yeah. you go with a guy like I think an instant impact would be Donovan Cleon or Dalton Connect. That's you know, guys like that. Yeah, I. If, but it sucks because we're not in a win now mode. Yeah, like that's the hardest part about this is is how many times, how many years in a row we can like end the season and not a win mentality to maybe get an opportunity to get one of these top guys and we miss every single time. So, would you say last year was a a like kind of a win mentality in that draft with bringing yeah. on a SAR? Like, or are we gonna? You, I think we're gonna go in the same route. We're gonna bring on someone that has potential like a younger player, and then hopefully it pans out for us. I think that's what we're going to do because we haven't been getting any guys with a ton of basketball like experience in college. Yeah, I think you Noah know, Sar definitely was a project player, but I feel this year who's ever making the decision with this fifth pick, they are go – unless it's – I don't know, unless you do get Tim Conley, then whatever he decides, he decides. But I do feel like who is ever the president in making that decision – they are going to go for a guy that is going to be ready day one, you know, like a Dalton connect that that's kind of my big fear is that it is going to be Dalton connect at number five, because basically, or, I mean, it could be Reed Shepard, which I would be happier about because he is younger. And I think with his shooting, he could be ready to produce day one, but I feel like he'll be Dalton connect because the organization cannot have another tanking season like mm -hmm. they have the past three seasons you cannot go into next year without guys ready to contribute and ready to play winning basketball so with that fifth pick you have to draft an instant impact player you know i know a ton of fans are upset i mean we're disappointed we are yeah, definitely. We, we want we wanted better we always want better but you want to know who's not upset at this who troy weaver he Explain. why would he want the number one pick if, if he botches two two years in a row, he botches a number one and a number two overall, he doesn't have a job, Lance. Him sure. him constantly getting this fifth pick is showing like, oh, well, we just, you know, we didn't get what we wanted. We got scuffed in the lottery again and blah, 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 blah. This is, no, this is Troy Weaver's best friend. It's his, it's his lifesaver at this point because we don't expect him to find a, a gem and or a needle in the haystack with this fifth overall pick. We don't. We're just hoping we get something out of it. And I think that's I think he celebrates. Like when that when that card went up, a star's face became a meme. He opened up a bottle of champagne and was like, we might get another year out of this bitch. Because 
he doesn't have to make the pick. You get what I'm saying, bro? Like, yeah, yeah, he doesn't okay. have to. He, he can fuck up, and it'll still be okay. Like, so I, I think Troy Weaver is smiling. I don't think he cares. Like, it's to the point where it's like, yeah, three in a row. Darn. We're mad. What are we going to do? The lottery like, sucks. Like, I, I guess with the fifth pick, I better <laughs> just take best player available. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, I think that's where we're at, man. Yeah, he's not drafting for fit with that fifth pick. He's not finding the right guy.